Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for having us here today. Um, so, the Future Group is probably a relatively unknown entity to most of you here today. Um, no surprise, really. I mean, we're from Norway, which is, after all, a very small country, really far to the north. So we don't get offended by people not having heard about us. But nor is it a coincidence that you haven't heard about us, because while we got started in 2013, we really didn't get cracking with the stuff that we do today until 2014, and we've been deliberately working under the radar ever since, until the spring when we were finally ready to tell the world what we've been up to. Uh, Today, the Future Group consists of about 150 people from over 20 different countries and from a wide mix of backgrounds. So we have you know, visual effects specialists, virtual studio engineers, game developers, TV content producers, back-end architects, and the list goes on. Um, when we emerged from Stealth this spring, uh, we did so with a couple of launches that so far have been really well received by the market and that we believe have the potential to change the world, uh, sorry, change the way, not only you know, how, how um, content is uh, produced, but also how it's distributed and consumed. I like the tagline for this conference. I even like the, the walk-up music here, uh, because you know, superpowers to change the world. The, world. the word superpowers actually very, very well describes the kind of talent we were looking for, the kind of qualities we were looking for when we started recruiting people to join our team. We were looking for people who had spent their careers ahead of the pack, who had, you know, pushing the envelope, uh, sort of pushing the boundaries of their natural habitat, and always venturing sort of uh, right at the very edge of, of, uh, of their, their businesses. And, and this is critical for the future group, because at the very core of, of what we're about uh, sits the concept of convergence. Uh, and convergence has been something that's been much talked about in media for a number of years, how different types of medias will converge into new media offerings, new ways to engage the audience, uh, and, you know, for that matter, brand new genres of entertainment, which is exactly uh, what I'm here to talk about today, which is uh, interactive mixed reality, or IMR for short. I like to say that uh, interactive mixed reality is convergence. Uh, it's the convergence of virtual reality and augmented reality. Uh, it's the convergence of devices, different types of devices to consume different experiences. Uh, and it's interactive. And that, that uh, creates a lot of new opportunities for, for storytellers out there. So basically with IMR, it's not really a question of you know, which kind of device you're using, uh, how you're using your device, and for what purpose. Uh, IMR is about the ability to have content live on multiple devices, but where each single device gives you a different experience of the same content. So it doesn't really matter anymore whether you're watching uh, a story unfold on linear TV, whether you're streaming it to your handheld device, whether you're playing with the content through, uh, through a, a mobile app, uh, or whether you're immersing yourself in VR may sound trivial, but trust me, it's not. Because in order to make this work, we've had to tackle the entire uh, entertainment value chain. Entertainment is, uh, you know, basically, in my view, consists of three, three basic comp components. You know, the, the story itself, the audience to, uh, to uh, listen to that story, and a few sponsors to pay for it. Um, and so when tackling this, and, and creating a new way for all of these stakeholders to sort of gain value from this, uh, we had to look at the entire, uh, the entire uh, media production value chain, starting right at the core. You know, how do you, how do you make the story come to life? How do, you, how, do you, how do you produce it? And as much as IMR is convergence, uh, our focus uh, on, in, in terms of R&D has been very much around integration. Uh, because the world is full of really cool technology. The trick for our purposes is to make it work together. So what we've done is combine technology, and, you know, some, some of it really well established in the TV and entertainment production industry already. We've combined that with, uh, with the latest from, from the visual effects uh, uh, category from, from uh, the movie production industry. We've taken military-grade sensor and simulation technology and combined that with some of the best studio hardware that money can buy. 
and we've retasked the Unreal game engine to make it, make it serve as a nerve center of everything. The result is pretty much a technology that, that makes you able to create any kind of content, from full-on virtual worlds to lifelike uh, AR elements and on a physical stage, uh, seamless integration be between virtual and real uh, elements, all in photorealistic quality, and all done with real-time rendering. And it's designed to work in a live production environment, and this is important. Uh, because uh, if you can't make it work, nobody's going to start using it. So, and, and it's already battle tested, and I'll show you a little video clip later on from, uh, from Lost in Time, like Mark mentioned, uh, where you can see some of the output from this. So, now you have the tools right on the left side of the panel there. You have the tools to create things. So, how about distribution? And this is one of the really cool things about you know, the way we've approached the technology is that, you know, the, the results of our in-studio technology makes it possible to distribute the end result to any number of devices. And it's on the device level that the engagement is created. Uh, you know, and with our technology, it, it, it's possible for you to engage, you know, in a way that makes you part of the content, that makes you part of the story. You can participate actively. And again, like, like I said, using your regular TV, using you know, any kind of handheld device, or like I said, VR goggles, or any combination of these for that matter. And then finally, in the, very, in the sort of middle of this, uh, this picture, uh, there's uh, what we like to call the social entertainment platform. It's really the catalyst for all of this. It's, it's what connects everything. Make sure that, that the experience become truly yours. Now this end-to-end -end solution creates something uh, that we think is pretty cool because it's an unbroken chain from the camera lens in the studio to the fingertips and eyeballs of the user. Um, so that's, that's kind of the technological sound. And it may, you know, sounds pretty easy probably, but it's really not because, you know, developing technology the way we see it is only half the story. Because what makes technology come to life, what, what makes it persevere in the long run uh, is what you do with that technology. And at the future group, the question is never, you know, what can we make with our technology? We rather flip it around and we say, you know, what technology do we need to create the experiences we want to create? So we don't think of ourselves as purely a technology company, even though, you know, we, we're pretty proud of the stuff we've done there as well. But we think of ourselves as a content-driven technology company. And this means that when we develop technology, it's because we need it to tell the stories we want to tell. And one of those stories uh, is one of the things that we launched this spring. It's an it's, um, entertainment experience called Lost in Time. Uh, we've co-created this alongside num you know, the world's number one creator of uh, TV entertainment content called Fremantle Media. Lost in Time plays on traditional game show qualities. Uh, so you have a bunch of uh, contestants in the studio uh, doing different types of challenges in order to take home the big jackpot. But where traditional game shows uh, are limited by their physical environment, you know, be that a TV studio or a tropical island or an obstacle course built somewhere in South America, uh, Lost in Time really knows no boundaries. We can, uh, with our technology, we can create any type of environment, any, any kind of challenge. So in Lost in Time, we have contestants riding on the back of dragons in the medieval ages, or, or racing through gold mines in the Wild West, uh, doing construction work on top of the Empire State Building in, in 1920s New York, uh, or entangling fuel lines at the space station in order to get the rockets launched. And while the contestants in the studio are doing this, uh, the audience at home is right there with them, playing along on a corresponding app where they immerse themselves in the same games um, as the contestants in the studio with a chance to take home the same prize of money. Not in competition with the uh, contestants in the studio, but in addition to the, uh, to the contestants in the studio. So this creates a, a whole new way of engaging the audience, basically turning what would have been a passive TV audience, passive TV viewer, into an active user. So let's take a look at what Lost in Time looks like. Or not. There we go. 
from the makers of the world's best live TV shows, Fremantle Media, and the Future Group, creators of interactive mixed reality, comes a TV show like no other. A TV game show that combines revolutionary gaming technology with the wonder and magic of Hollywood's special effects. Lost in Time is thrilling and truly interactive. The next generation of family entertainment is here. With the potential to change the way we watch television forever. Thank you. So it's pretty cool, right? Um, and it falls, you know, Lost in Time falls within the category of, of, of the sort of top le left panel here, IMR TV shows. Uh, and based on Lost in Time, we're seeing a lot of interest from, you know, not only, you know, Fremantle Media, uh, who are, you know, tasked with, with distributing Lost in Time, but also other content creators who want to see what they can do with, with uh, IMR technology. Um, either as you know, a full-on sort of things that are created from the ground up or as elements in existing TV properties. So that's exciting to see what's, uh, what, the, what the world will bring on that, one, that front. Another element that we're working on is, is uh, sports and live events. And, and this is an important market because literally sports and live events is really, you know, it's one of the big engagement drivers. Uh, so we have some pretty cool technology coming up uh, from there that basically take that engagement level to whole, to whole new levels. Uh, another uh, cool arena for us is eSports. Uh, eSports is really cool because it's already game engine based. Um, again, with our technology and our ability to blend virtual and real elements, we can, we can create brand new experiences with eSports. And for those of you uh, who followed the E-League finals on TBS this past Friday, you, just, you were able to see some of that. I would love to have a clip for you, but I don't, unfortunately. Uh, but basically, we put AR elements from the game uh, onto a physical stage uh, during, you know, li live broadcast on TBS and Twitch. So that was pretty cool. Um, mobile interactivity is, of course, one of the one of the cores of, of what we do, and it's it's where engagement is is created. Um, one of the cool things, I just want to mention this, one of the cool things of, of uh, Lost in Time is that we've seen the content not only drive engagement during, during the broadcast of the show, and this is one hour per week, but we've seen the content being, you know, live on throughout the, uh, throughout the week where people engage in the games and the content uh, throughout the week. And we're actually seeing session lengths on, the, on our app uh, of over 20 minutes per session uh, on average, which is pretty strong. And on the final two episodes of, uh, of Lost in Time in Norway, we saw this, uh, you know, we saw uh, um, the users, uh, 44, uh, four, over 40% interactivity uh, on that front. So that's exciting. I just want to touch very briefly on brand, what this means for brands, because interactivity creates, uh, you know, engagement, but it creates something else. It creates a live, uh, uh, live data connected to whatever we do. And imagine what live data can do in a broadcast, uh, broadcast environment. Uh, it's golden for broadcasters to have that kind of data, not only on how the audience is engaged in terms of numbers, but who are they? So just skipping to sort of the conclusion here. Um, IMR, in our, in our uh, um, uh, view, is, is exactly what I said. It's convergence. It's convergence of all types of media, all types of devices, all levels of engagement. It's making stories translate uh, seamlessly between these devices in ways that bridges gaps, uh, brings people together, and creates engagement across all of these platforms. We believe IMR is a superpower. Uh, it's already here. We really think it will change the world. I'm Halvor Visley. I'm from the Future Group. Thank you very much for your attention.